Hello, today I'm going to be showing you the latest prototype for my new electric eel wheel 5.x series. So this is still very much a work in progress and I just sort of wanted to show an update now because I've sort of reached the stage where it's, you know, functionally complete and there's just a lot of little tweaks and improvements to do and I also need to start sending it out to uh, some beta testers to get their feedback. So. Um, just a quick rundown on sort of the newish features since the, the last update. This dial is much improved. Uh, there's actually a spring inside of this tension dial now, and that gives it a nice uh, feel and a consistent uh, amount of um, effort to turn it at all times. And I can adjust that by changing the springs, which I might do. But overall, I'm, I'm really happy with the addition of the spring inside that dial. Uh, I, based on some feedback, I moved the controls around a little bit. So now this is the switch that controls um, Z-twist, S-twist, and off. And this is the dial that controls the speed, and they're both very much easy to get to. Um, in order to do that, I did have to break the circuit board into uh, two pieces. So this is sort of the main circuit board, and this is a circuit board with just these switches, uh, which I, I talked about last time. This is a, a new... Uh, brushless motor. It's uh, specifically designed for the use case. Um, I requested it based on the amount of force and speed that I'm looking for. So that motor performs very well. I'm, I'm quite happy with that motor now. Uh, let's see. I added these um, sliding hooks and I'm not happy with those. Those aren't easy enough to slide yet, but that's something I can definitely adjust going forward. The overall design is, is kind of close to right but I need to use thicker wire and I need to adjust some of the um, dimensions on them. But that's something that uh, I think that this is close to what the final hooks will be, but I have to adjust a, a few things to make them easier to slide and um, not as, as wobbly on here. Uh, let's see, what else have we done? So I think those are the big changes since last time. Uh, it's still much quieter and faster than the previous one. Here's one other thing I guess I added. So uh, this is just a, a battery pack, a 12 volt battery pack. It's one of the talent cells that I've suggested using on previous versions. And on the Nano, I did a 3D printed bottom cover. And for this slightly more expensive version, or it's more expensive, the, the 5.x is, um, yeah, more than twice the cost. So it's a lot more expensive. But when it's this expensive, I can probably include this bottom cover and you know some people would use it without the battery and just use wall power but um, I wouldn't ship it with a battery shipping lithium batteries in uh, air mail is problematic in the United States so um, I wouldn't ship them with the battery but it'd be easy to buy a battery separately and they'll just slide in like that and then the bottom uh, slides on like this oh wait now see it's not fitting, I have it backwards. So it just slides on like that, and clicks into place, and you plug it in, turn it on. So um, yeah, I mean, this thing is really quiet. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. And um, I mean, this is probably about the speed that the electric gear wheel 5.2 would spin at, and this one goes a lot faster. So you hear that clicking sound, and that's actually this belt. If I slow it down a little bit, that'll go away. But yeah, the, there's several reasons that's happening right now, and I have to just do some more engineering to kind of get rid of that. That's really the only sound that comes out of this that um, shouldn't be. And, I, and that's something I'll definitely be able to solve before the final version. But uh, yeah, right now I'm, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. And uh, now it's time to send it off to, I was happy I got it done now because uh, people who are part of the uh, Electric Eel Wheel Nano program for Kickstarter or pre-orders know I'm getting close to uh, starting to ship those out and that's gonna consume all my time. But because I finished this just before those arrived, um, I'm gonna send this out to some uh, beta testers that I've worked with in the past and maybe some new ones as well. So, the timing on, on getting this prototype to the point where testers can start using it is, is very good. And they'll give me some more feedback and probably suggest some additional changes, which is 
uh, really great because they'll work on that the next you know, a few weeks or month and I'll, I'll be working on um, shipping the Nano to everybody who backed me there. One thing about, um, I know a lot of people are probably going to say, hey, I'd like to be a beta tester, uh, but I used to just have like a contest and randomly select uh, beta testers. Here, let me get down here. So that uh, worked, but not optimally. Um, I, I had, I found some great people that I'm still going to use as beta testers today uh, on this project, but I also ran into some problematic cases where people didn't return it or they didn't get feedback or both. And um, what I've decided to try this time is I'm going to just pick people from the community that um, are active in it. So basically there's the Ravelry group and the Facebook group and anybody who's really active there and is, you know, giving people useful feedback and stuff and just sort of part of the community there, you know, writes well enough that I can understand them and, and you know, helps people with problems and that kind of thing. Um, I'll notice them and I'll potentially ask them people privately if they'll, if they want to be beta testers. So that's how I'm going to be selecting them this time. So please don't send me a bunch of you know, emails or, or um, posts asking, hey, I want to be a beta tester because that's not how I'm doing it this time. It's just going to be me selecting people uh, on the forum that seem to be helpful in the community. So I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.